Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-02. When last we met, a group of seasoned adventurers had docked their rented boat, the Seafarer, in the harbor of Saydown, capital of the island of Denali. After reaching out to the dockmaster, they were introduced to the monarch of the land and his enormous clerical bodyguard, Grish. Grish showed the party around and through the use of small talk, got to know one another. By the end of the day, the cleric had obtained lodging for the party, who noted the overwhelming presence of guards around their establishment. We begin on day two of the Denali campaign. As the cock crows, the individual members of the party rise and get ready for a new day. The beds were very pleasant, especially after an extended sea voyage, and as they met in the common room of the Saydown Inn, everyone except Phidias the gnomish rogue looked rested. When asked why he was so tired, the demi-human began to complain of the unfriendly atmosphere in Saydown and pointed out he was not happy. Further prying by his colleagues revealed that the gnome had attempted to leave the establishment several times throughout the night to go get something to eat, but had been unceremoniously stopped by the guards each time. A small cut on the arm was indicative that some incentive had been delivered to the rogue to keep him inside. As the group obtains food from the smiling innkeepers, Grish, bodyguard to the king, arrives and also orders breakfast. He is congenial and inquires as to the accommodations, as, and as the group commends the bedding, several heaping plates of food arrive for the cleric, and the party is astonished by the sheer volume. Do continue, says Grish, and smacks the hand of Phidias as the small rogue attempts to free a large piece of cod from the cleric's plate. Harris, the mage, pointedly asks Grish how long they will be quote-unquote guests of the king and is greeted with the shaking of a head. The cleric points out that his presence is merely a safeguard for all parties concerned. He explains that the group's lack of cultural understanding could get them into trouble, and he points out that he will accompany them for a few more days and then, assuming all is well, return to the palace to guard the king. After finishing breakfast, the group tours the city again and are quizzed on the information that they had been told the day before. The cleric is impressed with the knowledge retention of the group and the ability of Phidias to slip away unnoticed several times. Near midday, a ruckus is heard and the guards tailing the group move forward but are called off by Grish. As they round the corner, they find a comely woman fighting off three men. She is lightly armored and has a pair of short swords strapped to her back. Her dark complexion indicates that she is from the region, but her eyes indicate that she is at least partially foreign. The party watches as the female fights off three men with items from merchant carts and never bothers to unsheath her weapons. After suitably embarrassed, the ruffians run off and are pursued by the guards at Grisha's urging. The cleric gives a shrill whistle and the woman whose smile extinguishes from her face, comes up to the group. Yes, guard master, the woman asks shrilly. The cleric chastises the woman and calls her Yolanda. You've been warned repeatedly about brawling in the streets, Yolanda. The woman begins to offer an explanation about how she was the victim, but the cleric seems unconvinced. Several merchants step into the discussion and do confirm her account, proclaiming her to be innocent. The pair get into a heated argument, ending with Yolanda pointing out that Grish was wrong and he could just swallow it. The large cleric clinched and unclinched his fist several times, and his face turned a dark shade of umber. As tempers rose, the squeaky voice of Phidias the Rogue piped up, pointing out, I like her. Can she join us? Both parties shot the gnome a look, who quickly slinked off behind Sir Omel. The young woman calmly asked if the group was in need of someone with a fast brain and faster blades. 
Looking at each other, the collective shrugged and invited her to join them. Pushing one finger into the large, larger grish, she positioned herself in the middle of the group and asked what the plan was. Anger welled up within the cleric's eyes, but faded quickly agreeing that Yolanda Two Blades should join the group. Don't worry, Grish. I know you just like looking at me, she said. She then suggested catching a nearby tavern for some drinks. Unfazed by the tension, the group made their way to the rusty scabbard tavern where drinks were ordered and brief histories were exchanged. As the party listened to the attractive fighter, it was Harris the Mage that asked her about her communication skills. Grish interjected to the party that they would find she was full of surprises. After shooting an angry look at the captain of the guards, she pointed out that she too had circumnavigated the region and had the pleasure of several forays into the unknown. She admitted that she picked up on the common tongue while working with some naval units off the coast of Lockerbie in the west. Grish gulped down his third mug and spat out, Pirates, you mean. Yolanda attempted to defend herself from Grish's accusations until until Sir Omel had to break them up before fists were thrown. He remarked that she didn't seem to mind the size difference, and her retort was, Size doesn't make the man, which gained a cheer from Phidias, who was pawing through a strange bag of coins that he had seemed to have acquired out of thin air. Grish looked around quickly, but could not ascertain where the bag of Denali coins had come from. As the gnome examined his newfound wealth, he asked the pair why there were only silver coins in use. A guffaw from Yolanda prompted Grish to shoot her an angry look. He then explained that the regent had declared that silver was the coin of realm, and that items made of gold were to be removed by the guards, and a fair trade of silver given in its place. As the group prepared to leave, Grish asked Phidias where he got the bag of coins, and the response of, Your mom, did little to improve the large man's mood. Standing outside, the group noticed a fantastic view of the harbor. After a few minutes of taking in the beauty of this foreign city, the silence was broken by Brother Stance, who, speaking out loud, pondered what type of adventures they would be able to find in this land. The group silently nodded before heading back to the Saydown Inn. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.